Happy End is a 2017 film directed by Michael Haneke. It depicts a wealthy family living in Calais, France, dealing with their personal lives and covers themes such as migration, segregation, apathy and choice. Considered one of Haneke's lesser works, it remains highly ambitious and in my opinion requires further viewing. The film begins with some social commentary. A young girl films her mother's bathroom routine. Shot vertically on a phone and with tedious commentary, this seems to show how anything can be material these days. Her mother brushes her teeth, flushes the toilet. It's this mundane commentary where the film points at art itself. What are you getting out of watching this? At a site run by the family's construction firm, a landslide leaves one of their workers in critical condition at the hospital. Meanwhile, the girl who was filming her mother, Eve, slips a lot of pills into her mother's food, which forces her into a coma. It's at this point where the film starts to look at the decisions we make. Eve chose to drug her mother and as a result goes to live with her father, his new wife and their family at their mansion in Calais. And this is not the first time she has poisoned someone, telling her grandfather she did it at a summer camp to a girl once. Asking if she regretted doing that, she says yes, she did, but only after the fact, when it was too late. Decision plays a part in all our lives, of course, and we have to live with the consequences. Eve's mother ends up passing away, and though Eve is coy about taking responsibility, she does at times express regret, even crying about the situation. After Pierre is attacked, he too makes a decision to not call the police. Why do you say that? Instead of going to the police, it would have been better if we would have brought an arrangement. He and his mother have a fractious relationship. He's a side character in her existence. Her son, but a fuck-up son, a heavy drinker, a person that reacts, makes decisions and has to live with the consequences. She's more calculated, more grown up, yes, but perhaps too orderly, wanting everything under utter control. I couldn't pass up the opportunity to showcase Pierre's karaoke performance of Sia's Chandelier in this video. No surprise, as a reckless character, he's all over the place. He's not controlled like his mother. The lyrics fit with his character. I'm going to live like tomorrow doesn't exist. Like it doesn't exist. The family has help around the house in the form of Jamelia and Rashid, a married couple who cook and clean for them. They also live on the property with their daughter and their dog. The film clearly wants to have a commentary on race. For starters, let's deal with the fact it's set in Calais. As an Englishman, what I know about Calais is that it is the main area from France in which you catch a ship to the coast of England. That is where the crossings happen, between Calais and Folkestone, or Dover. The Eurotunnel, an under-ocean train tunnel, also runs around this region. Migrants have gathered around the Calais area on the northern French coast since the late 1990s, hoping to find passage to the UK, many trying to stow away on lorries or trucks. The UK is seen as their happy end, a utopia where all will be better. I should perhaps mention relations between England and France, divided by sea but neighbours all the same. It's of no surprise that Anne forms a relationship with Englishman Lawrence, played by Toby Jones. Perhaps the film is giving us hope, saying that these two camps can come together to sort out a crisis. It's this new relationship in the film that even blossoms to an actual engagement. Recall the landslide. Now, Kelly was host to something called Comte de Lalande from January 2015 until October 2016. Comte de Lalande became commonly known around the world as the Calais Jungle, a refugee and migrant encampment in the Calais area, which at its end was home to over 8,000 people. A shantytown had shops, schools, places of worship and even a boxing club. Conditions were horrendous though, inhabitants claiming of insufficient drinking water, lack of toilet facilities and inadequate healthcare. And the site in question? It was built on a landfill. It is of no surprise when I learn this as to why the film has a landslide disaster a location that eventually will fall and crumble without any support. The movie is littered with commentary on race within Europe, a radio station talking about the European football championships where the qualifying European countries will compete for the prize. Lawyers and doctors are white characters while servants like Rashid and Jamelia and the man serving ice cream are not. I believe the film wants to show how easily we can just accept a non-white person in these roles. The film likes to poke at our ideas behind what feels different Watch this walk and talk conversation between Eve and her father. And they stop at this point. But what I became aware of was the group of black men not in beachwear in the background. Like this conversation in the film stops so we would notice them. I believe the film wants us to question why we find this noticeable at all. But clearly wants to show something different. Whether you attain that to the colour of their skin or the fact that they aren't in beachwear like everyone else. Regardless, the film shows groups of white people together and groups of black people together like it's that scene from the South Park movie. And it isn't uncommon for groups of white people to be together and groups of black people together and across every race of people. We're all familiar with that. But I do believe the film wants to point its finger at it. It points its finger at the problem. 
that we simply stay within what we believe to be comfort zones and let division happen. But let's look within ourselves. This scene doesn't give us the dialogue, but forces us to use our imagination about what's being said between George and this group of men. What would our thoughts be if there were just two men, or an elderly couple, or anything? What assumptions do we make about this conversation because this rich, old, and frankly senile man is talking to a group of young black men and offering them money and his watch? If you've seen the film, we know George wants to die. He asks his hairdresser to help him, suggesting he buy him a gun. The hairdresser shuts him down. Now, knowing that George wants to kill himself, what are our perceptions on this scene with a group of black men once more? The fact that George is asking them and the men seemingly bemused, shaking their heads, are you more inclined to wonder if he's asking them for directions? Or has your brain suggested that George is asking these men if they have or know anyone that has a gun? See, it's our assumptions, as misguided as they so often are, that can lead us down some very troublesome paths. Now I'm in no way suggesting George did ask these men if they had a gun, but I believe the film wants to challenge your thoughts on why you thought he could be asking for one. This man gives him a piece of his mind. Clearly what George said was inappropriate. We already have our thoughts on migration, we already have our thoughts on the upper class or people that live in low income housing, but are these thoughts looking beyond our own needs? I'm no expert on race relations within France, but I do know there's been several riots over the past few decades relating to race, police action and there's been much dissent between a clear class divide. Pierre gets attacked trying to get a solution over the incident of the landslide and is beaten up in the Banlieue, which is their low income housing area. In France these areas are often called poverty traps and any criminality from people from them has fanned the flames of racist behaviour. France's history with race is a sticky one and it is a story as old as time. In Haneke's excellent cachet it draws attention to the Paris massacre of 1961 when a horrendous number of Algerians were killed largely as it is to be believed to have been drowned in the River Seine. It's a horrifying incident and well worth reading about if you have the time. With happy end the divide continues and it is Pierre that is a character that wants people to see it for what it is. They are a rich white family and they have black help. Jamila is our esclave Moroccan. It's a real pearl. At the film's climax, he brings a group of men to his mother's engagement party. He introduces them to the whole room, talking about their struggles, where they're from, etc. Now, clearly, this is made to shock, to surprise, not just to the white guests who are clearly uncomfortable at the party, but to us, the audience. Je suis désolée que vous ayez que vous ayez dû assister à cette scène pénible. Lawrence tries to save face by actually inviting them in. Only when faced with being perceived as excluding people do they act. Clearly, a group of black immigrants in France attending a high-class white engagement party in Calais is something you don't see every day, and it is uncommon because we've drawn our lines. We have this land, you have that land, we do this, you do that, your people, our people, and the two mixing, well, that can result in unrest or violence, so let's just not, shall we? Characters in the film say things like, yeah, let's talk about something else. Both sides, though, say they want to negotiate further to find some sort of solution. Again and again, we create discourse, some things out of action, but most often out of apathy. And it's apathy that the film conveys so well. Pierre's decision to not call the police to help his family's case. No one wanting to help George die. Assisted suicide companies in Zurich even refusing. Father, you don't love anyone. I read your emails. All in a time when Eve, who when she was much younger than 12, was prescribed pills that sedated her. And what could go wrong? And let's not forget this line. Car tu le dis souvent toi-même. Mauvaise herbe croit toujours. Weed always grows. When decisions are not made, that's what happens. The weeds grow. This leads us nicely into this scene with George and Eve, who despite the vast age difference probably have the most in common throughout all the characters in this family. They even say the same thing. Stop this comedy. Firstly, this line really struck me. Décide-toi, tu entres, tu sors. It's such a throwaway line in a common movie, but in Happy End, he once again is looking at the act of decision. You need to decide. In the UK, we have Brexit. We had to decide in or out. And here, Eve is the symbol of the indecisive. Are you in or are you out? George asks her why she tried to kill herself, and though she doesn't tell him, I believe he already knows. He tried to kill himself too, by driving into a tree. He failed and ask people to help him die. They both are trapped, he in his wheelchair with his corroding mind and her in a 12 year old body with the problems she faces not truly knowing where she is in this world. Of course, George finds it easier to be decisive after his life experiences. He has no regrets over playing a part in his wife's death, telling Eve he suffocated her as an act of mercy. Eve is clearly a cipher. She is here to represent the embodiment of an immigrant. 
In this scene, she's in between both her father and her stepmom, and it's clearly deliberate to let us know that Eve does come between these two parties. She's a representation of an immigrant. Actually, first let's talk about the word immigrant. It only means a person who has come to a different country in order to live there permanently. However, saying the word immigrant now comes with a host of implications. You think illegal immigrant, unwelcome, not from here, different, us and them. The majority of the world's problems all stem from us and them. Eve is a person from a different place coming to live there permanently. The family do keep telling her she's welcome, but while she now lives in the family mansion, this is a vastly different environment to be living in. She will feel different. Eve's parents were not together. Her dad moved on. So if Eve is a representation of an immigrant, then you're feeding the notion that there is a divide and two sides once more. One side is affluent, carefree and apologetic, and the other, well, the other side is sick or dead which is a perfect analogy in the mind of those that want to leave their war-torn nations for a better life across the sea. I find this bit of background really interesting. The scene is about George, but watching the background I couldn't help pick up on this intentional sequence. There's only enough room on the pavement and two sets of people meet, a woman, her pram and small child, and an elderly couple. I suppose the suggestion could be generational, old versus young, but perhaps it too is about decision. Is the mother, quote, the bad guy for not letting the elderly couple take the pathway? Or are the elderly couple the bad guys for not letting the new mother with her pram take it? Movies may have influenced us to believe in happy endings. Of course, the title of the movie is satire. Typically in movies, we encounter obstacles yet overcome them. Therefore, if you take an issue like race relations or sexism and see them as obstacles, then they too will eventually be beaten, right? Perhaps people striving for this utopia is admirable but only achievable if everyone has the same viewpoint, which they do not. A happy end is a fallacy, a conclusion to a story, but in reality, George doesn't get his happy end and his kids don't get theirs either. The migrant issues are still there. People to this day are in Calais seeking asylum. There isn't a happy end. There isn't even an end, really. It just goes. Perhaps Thomas and his first wife thought the marrying and having Eve was their happy end, but it wasn't. Then Thomas moves on to Anais and has another child. Is this their happy end? Well, no, because Thomas is still fooling around, sending dirty messages to Claire the cello player. The film wants you to make a decision. Are you in or are you out? Are you going to be apathetic about a migrant crisis or do something about it? Are you going to ignore clear race and class divides and just hope it all works out or actually be a part of positive change? Eve rolls George down a slipway towards the sea. He has finally found someone to help him die. He presses her to go further. What quality does Eve have that he sees and likes? Is it empathy? Was it empathy that put her mother in a coma, eventually killing her? No. Maybe she was acting on impulse, reactionary as we all can be, but she can't roll him further. She makes an active decision not to do that. And now he can finish the job himself. She records it, vertically of course. We needed the distraction of a migrant crisis to get to this point. Eve's aunt Anne looks at her disapprovingly. She doesn't see a decision. She sees Eve's apathy at not helping. But it was a decision. Just one they never made themselves. Are you in or are you out? Thank you.